The nerds are ready to play video games. Bjorn is yawning. Rainer's looking good. That's a good sweater on Rainer. The hair is a little messy, but we'll let it slide. A drink with Roddy. Not useless. I will hydrate then, mate. I'm gonna hydrate, guys. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, Hanel. I completely agree. I'm personally a big fan of this format, but this format also only really works if every match is exciting, right? Like, you don't want eight players to be way better than the other eight because then it's kind of irrelevant. But now we watch 16 absolutely amazing players and sure, maybe there are two or three big underdogs, but basically every match is awesome. Let's do it. Final best of three of Masters Coliseum Day 3. Let's get it on. Bottom right side, Shopify, Rebellions, Bian. Top left side, the Italian Stallion, Rainer. Both players 0 and 1 in the tournament. Good morning, Anna. Or night. As I am hydrating, guys. Hydrating is important. Don't forget. Yeah. Obviously, the first round is maybe kind of like whatever, but everything matters. Especially in this tournament with all 16 players being that freaking strong and amazing. And sure, maybe some people will say like, ah, but Firefly and Trigger, Ruddy. No, I think they're both very good. And I don't think they are free wins for anybody in this tournament either. These streams are too early. It's because the Chinese are very passionate about StarCraft 2. So a lot of the action is going to take place around this time. Whether it's WTL or Kung Fu Cup or in this case Masters Coliseum. Obviously, they are based in China, so for them, it's a perfectly fine time to run the tournament, you know, like 7 p.m. China time, 6 p.m., whatever it is for them. So, uh, it's perfectly fine for me. The only thing that sucks a tiny bit is that, historically, this is not the best time to stream StarCraft. Uh, a lot of Europeans are obviously going to be in university, or they are working. And when it comes to, like, receiving support on Twitch... Streaming for American viewers is in general better as tipping culture is more of a thing there. But I am very happy that we get to watch all these games and there's something to look forward to every single day. Mm -hmm. Two Rex on the low ground for Bjorn over here. He's going to crank out a couple of Reapers. Rainer has been working very hard on his ZVT over the last few weeks. He's been playing a lot of ladder, runs into Clem very often. Even Whispers Clem tells him to search if he can get a game. And obviously he has been doing a lot of custom games as well. He uploaded a video on his YouTube channel where you guys can see him play against five other people controlling one race. Let's hope for Rainer that he doesn't uh, start off by losing a drone here because that would be a very frustrating start. Obviously, he is going to play with a little bit of ping as well. Most likely, game 1 is on US West, game 2 is on Central, game 3 is on West. And if you don't know what that means, West is slightly better for the Koreans. Ooh, Beyond makes a mistake with the Reaper. And yeah, that's not something that happens very often. He tilts his head immediately, where he's like, oh, come on. Me? Micro Jackson? That was a donation, guys. That was an actual donation. Eight ads, WTF. The ads played before, mate. And yes, once an hour, we're just going to run eight ads because that means that for the rest of the hour, there are zero. So while I am AFK and you're watching a bureau back screen, there is a chance that yes, eight ads will play. And then you're done for 57 minutes. I personally think that is somewhat acceptable, but if you're very unhappy with it, you should absolutely keep on letting me know. It is very important to me. Obviously, losing a Reaper so early on makes it uh, a lot easier for Rainer to just do his thing. And he doesn't have to worry too much about losing a Queen or building a few too many defensive units. Beyond really wants to get that creep to him, or really wants it, and he does get it, and he saves both of the Reapers. So, that went slightly better for Beyond, playing a dangerous game there, but he gets away with it. 81% Rainer, isn't that a bit too high? I do think Rainer is going to win, and I am cheering for Rainer as he is my teammate and he's my boy. But yeah, I think 81% is a little high. If you guys settle for like 60-40 or 65-35, I think that's fine, but... 81% against 19, no, I think we're doing Beyond a little bit dirty there, but... 
beyond his factory, guys, with this bull because he's playing triple CC is a little bit late. And now the Reapers are gonna run into Roaches in the center of the map, and Bion is very unhappy with his entire game. Loses that Reaper too. He's just been shaking his head. He goes for a very far forward bunker that works against the right side, but it doesn't really work against the center. And obviously, you cannot repair this thing, right? Like, where are you gonna bring the SCVs from? As Rainer shows up with a couple of Ravages, he has one SCV that he can repair. Rainer is droning up behind this, so Rainer doesn't have any intention on ending the game here. Yeah. Another very lovely start for Bjorn. I understand his frustration, but obviously it is important for Bjorn to keep his head calm. Like, those Reapers at that phase in the game are not gonna win you the game anymore. A whole bunch of stint bio units with two medivacs, they can win you the game, so. I understand this frustration, but it's obviously important to just keep it under control, shake it off, as T Swift would say. And keep going. Has Rain even lost anything? He lost the creep tumor. <laughs> and an overlord that he just sent into the main. I think that's about it. Bjorn is not as strong as late game. You know, it's funny because you're not the first one to say that, but I will forever think back of the Castus Civil War, that amazing tournament that Wadi organized for us back then. I had Raynor on my team, and Raynor actually lost a proper late game against Bjorn on yeah, that kind of black pink map. Top left against bottom right with that Zelnaga Watchtower and the rocks in the center with side blockers. It was a game that went on for like 45 minutes and it always felt that Reyna was winning, but he just could not kill Bjorn. And eventually the ghost went all the way. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, I, I think that Bjorn's late game is probably a little better than some of you guys giving kudos for. It's just that he looks amazing from time to time with just pure marines, right, in the early game. And we call him Micro Jackson and he has blown us away many times in the past. But don't sleep on his late game. Bjorn knows how to build ghosts and liberators if he has to. I, I forgot the name of the map. I'm very bad with names now. It's not Neon Vital Square, not Disco Bloodbath. It had a... I'm, I'm terrible with map names. I only know the map, the map names of our current map. And then I just forget everything. As we do have a double drop in the main base and Bjorn kills a queen, gets a spore crawler, finds three drones as well, gets an overlord, might even get an extractor here. This wasn't too bad, right? Not... I don't think it was Blackpink either. Not Romanticide, not Light. Alright, I'll look it up. You guys are uh, terrible at this. <laughs> now it becomes a thing and you guys will keep on guessing and keep on being wrong. You guys will be like, Waterfall, Ruddy, Moon Dance? No! <laughs> Liquipedia, Caster, Civil War. No, not Turbo Cruise either. We'll just take a look at Caster Civil War and then we'll tell us the map. Curious Minds. Yes, there you go, Lock Lock. Thank you. You're the one who gets it by the time that I've looked it up. Curious Minds is the late game. Beyond versus Reina game I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys can find that game on YouTube as well. I think that Wadi uploaded all the VODs back then. It was a great game. This is very annoying for me because I had Rainer on my team. <laughs> Do you miss Golden Wall and Purity and Industry? Golden Wall I did really like. I thought it was a fun map. Purity and Industry... Not that great. I did beat Christiana once in a Wadi tournament on that map. And that gave me the best of three victories. So. I do have fun memories of Purity and Industry. I, in general, like weird maps with island bases and a gold in the bottom, you know, that you can make secretly. But I also don't like air blockers for Phoenix. And I don't like slow zones. Slow zones just suck. Rainer is indeed currently in Italy, and he's playing from his grandma's house. So he's not staying at the house where his brother lives and his mom and his dad. He likes to play at his grandma's house. It's a bit more quiet there. He will stay in Italy until IEM Katowice is done, and I think after Katowice he will come back to the Netherlands. Reina already has Hive done, guys. Nine minutes in, first Vipers on the way, Adreno Glens on the way, as Bjorn is uh, working on 2 2 upgrades. And it's becoming a 4 base Terran. He is not gonna take the center base as base number 4. He wants to take the one on the left side of his natural, and then he can always take the center base as his fifth base. Making him ravioli as we speak. 
what is Bjorn doing there with those medevacs? By the way, Bjorn, there's a queen. He's going to lose that, but he does have a lot of marines here. Herena, his bailings were a little bit out of position. Bond Widowmine hasn't fired yet, gets a tiny shot off. Oh, bro, I don't think that's really worked out for Bjorn. Wow, that uh, he actually killed the queen. Okay, so Reyna was focused on that fight. The queen did not kill that medevac, so it wasn't too bad for Bjorn. Reyna is indeed getting Adreno immediately as those queens are working on the medevacs. Medevacs will activate their boost ability and unload into the natural. Vipers drop a peril bomb, perhaps. Careful, Reyna. Reyna loses his first Viper. Loses uh, no second Viper, but don't think he's super happy with how that went. I think Bjorn is playing pretty damn good here, guys. He's getting away with murder a few times as he can now start working on the spawning pool. Adreno glands five seconds for finishing up. Four, three, two, one. Gets denied, right? I don't read Chinese. But I'm going to say that that Adreno glands just got denied. That was incredibly close. I'm going to say that that was a denial. That's massive. Ah, Bjorn's playing good. Raynor had a promising start, but in the last two minutes, definitely struggling a little. Not a power bomb goes down on a medevac, and that will be the end of that medevac. But now the queens do get tagged by a couple of these marauders. Two queens with a lot of energy get picked off. Raynor is waiting for, I guess, the spawning pool to come back online. I wouldn't have hated an ultra. We have Bailey trying to crash into buy units on the right side. This is where all that Archon practice is going to pay off. Uh, Ultras without kindness plating, they just disappear so quickly. Marines and Marauders very low and HP spinning into a mineral line. Ah, uh, look at them, Ultras dying 10-15 seconds before Adreno. Reyna's supply looks massive, but I think so much of it is in production. And he really needs to start getting those units in the right places, otherwise he is in trouble. There are more Widow Mines that can burrow here. Those Widow Mines will burrow, what are the Vipers going to do? They drop Parabombs. Beyond is displaying great micro against the Parabombs. I think Rainer is in serious trouble, guys. Like, maybe if those six Ultras can come out, it's a completely different ballgame, but the hatchery dies on the left. Six drones die. Make it ten plus drones that die. Well, the next set of Ultras will at least have kindness plating. The Lynx will eventually get Adreno Glance, but Bjorn is not slowing down anytime soon, and he is just going for it. I think Bjorn should have scanned here, by the way, to take care of the creep, but he's been battling non-stop. Here are those Ultras, they are tanky, they are beefy, the first one does die, I think the rest should be good enough, right? Uh, two more die, one final Ultra remains, extra Terran units show up, it is not going to be good enough for Raynor. I thought those Ultras could carry him here with plus two Carapace and Kindness splitting, but it does not happen. And not a Parabomb, but a great split off immediately by Bionis. Even Blinding Clouds get dropped. I mean, it's just a bloodbath over here, everything is dying. 29 drones is a serious amount of workers to lose. Reyna now down to 77. Great attack by Beyond, man. Great execution, great attack. Relentless aggression. The way we know and love Beyond. As he is looking great. 13 minutes into Heartlet. Can Reyna somehow buy enough time for himself to at least stabilize and turn this into a different kind of game? As Adreno now does finish up, but another queen falls. Morphing Banelings could be in a bit of a pickle, and they are. As the Widow Mines will connect, but it's seven additional workers falling. And another head three that's gone. Bjorn is playing at a serious pace here, man. Holy smokes. Yeah. The Observer is also showing us that Reyna never started 3-3. But to be fair, he's been damn broke for the last few minutes. So I don't think this was like an oversight. I don't think it's something he necessarily forgot. It's just that obviously he does not have unlimited money. Especially not after losing two bases and 35 workers. Jan is going to get a cancel on that hatch in the center. Rainer sending over a couple of links and two ultras. The ultras obviously are a bit tanky and now with kindness, but there's so much bio. Jan is just choking Rainer to death at the moment. He says, Rainer, you have four bases and that is going to be it, my friend. I will not allow you to get any more, not on my watch. As those Widow Mines blow up. Links, Banes, and Ultras. I don't see a way here for Raynor. We do land a tiny abduct. A little bit of friendly fire of these Widow Mines, but... Isn't Raynor just running out of steam? He is going to push Beyond back successfully. Near planetary, no way, Jose. If Raynor can maybe get like the top right side up and running, guys. 
There's like a tiny chance. But I don't see any reason for Beyond to stop doing what he's currently doing. And that is to be in the face of Reyna. Make sure all the fights take place on Reyna's side of the map. On the edge of creep or even off creep. Just make it so damn difficult for Reyna to expand. I love these Vi units. Are very low on HP though. So Beyond needs to be careful with that. Vipers, Rainer. Okay, he's only aware of it. Nipi did connect, I believe, as we drop a Parabomb and a Blinding Cloud. Rainer cannot go off that ramp. I know that army is low on HP, but he cannot chase there. And now Beyond is going to split off that one Medivac to the top right and see if Rainer is trying to get that base up and running. Secretly. Oh, and we also throw down a scan. I'm not sure if that was <laughs> totally worth it, but sure. Uh, that means that Rainer's gonna have to cancel that base as well. Widowmine is gonna be left behind to deny any future attempts of taking that base. Beyond accidentally build a Reaper, but he's also maxed out. Gets a cancel on that base on the left side of the map as well. Just don't see a way. The War of Attrition is gonna go heavily in favor of Beyond here. And even if Beyond takes a bad fight or two, he has the economy to take a bad fight. That was a sick Pongo and great Bayman connections for Rainer, but. With everything I just said, Bjorn can afford this and Reyna cannot. Von Ruf Luz says that it's pretty over. I agree with you, mate. I think it's pretty over. Look at this stranglehold that Bjorn has just put on Reyna, where it's just like four bases, mate. That's it. You are not gonna get a fifth. Any attempt on a fifth base, I will shut down immediately. I do think this is a good Terran map. The problem for Reyna is that I don't think the other maps are gonna be a whole lot worse. <laughs> Obviously, Bjorn is going to veto Equilibrium and Ratu set, so pick your poison. Even Cerro loses a decent amount on this map. Against Clem, lost against Oliveira as well. In the ESO Masters Atlanta. Infesta gets uh, picked off. A couple of the extra links will get on top of the bio units here, but there is just... Uh, very little to be hopeful of if you're cheering for Rain or if you're looking for a way to see Rainer still come out on top here and be victorious. Rainer plays with a big screen now. I think he's just kind of close to his monitor. If I remember Rainer being in my place, his monitor is very close to his face. A lot of uh, world-class video gamers do that. Think of Happy, the Russian uh, undead player. That man is like kissing his monitor. He's making out with his undead units. But he never loses, so it's pretty good. And Counter-Strike players in general are very close to the monitor too. Mm -hmm. That guy was annoying me. GG gets skull. Beyond takes the one elite. After keeping Rainer on four bases forever. And that is, uh, that is going to do it for Heartlet. Rainer in a tiny bit of a pickle, down 0-1 in the series, 0-1 overall in the tournament. Game 2 will be played on Golden Aura, and Game 3, if we get there, will be decided on El Sione. You know, Doxor, a couple of years ago, and especially in the early days of StarCraft 2, a lot of people had these brilliant ideas of having a zoom on their minimap and putting it very big on their second monitor. And they thought that this was like 200 IQ big brain gaming. And they're like, is this cheating, guys? And it's like, no, it's just a bad idea, mate. Like, <laughs> it's not cheating, but this is not going to make you any better. <laughs> what happened in game one? Rainer had a promising start, but right when he was getting Hive, Beyond just fired up all sorts of aggression, was everywhere at once. Rainer missed one or two opportunities to shut down some of the drops, shut down Medivax, kill them when he could. And at one point he was just chasing after Beyond everywhere he could. Mm -hmm. And then Beyond started denying bases, killing bases, and he just kept Rainer on four and made it impossible for Rainer to get a fifth base up and running again. Rainer also got a bit unlucky twice, like losing the spawning pool one second before Adreno glands is painful. And then obviously losing three ultras five seconds before Kindness plating was a bit painful as well. Mm -hmm. 
If he practices this with 5 GMs, how can Bjorn get damage with no tasking? Well, that's because obviously Bjorn is incredibly good too. And Bjorn is also very fast. As effective as perhaps that training of Rainer could be when it comes to spreading yourself thin and defending multiple locations at once, Bjorn is still also incredibly good at what he does. So it's not like Rainer is the only quick player out there and is the only one that can take two or three or four fights at once, right? Someone like Bjorn is going to do that too. On top of that, all five of those guys were not GM, but Reyna just wanted a couple of clicks on his video. In the top left side, guys, Shopify Rebellions, Bjorn. Bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who I still believe can bring it back. It is Basilisk, Reyna. Reyna is incredibly quick, but so is Bjorn, guys. Bjorn is also a previous world champion of StarCraft 2. The year 2016 went his way. Reyna obviously crowned himself world champ in the year 2021, in our COVID year. Two of the GM players no showed. And then you had Pi and Wingend. The two of them combined are not even GM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, they are my friends guys. I can shit talk them. Is GM? From time to time. Mm -hmm. Kidding, pie. Kidding. <laughs> Was it harder to win BlizzCon in 2016 than in 2019? Well, in 2019, Dark won BlizzCon, right? I think 2019 was Dark Share. <sighs> uh, I don't know. It's very hard for me to say. I think it was incredibly difficult in both years. <laughs> to be the best video gamer on the planet in any game, on any given moment, is going to be damn difficult. Mm -hmm. 2016 was just after region luck. The, the region luck thing, that doesn't really matter. I've always, to the day of today, find it fascinating that people can get upset over some regional tournaments being a thing. It's like, in uh, athletics, imagine if when it comes to sprinting, right? Jamaica is fucking good. So if you're a European 100 meter sprinter, it's very hard to become Olympic champ. Imagine if you just say like, no, European championships not allowed. National championships not allowed. You want to be fast? Go beat those guys from USA and Jamaica. And if not, don't cry about it. It's like, that's crazy. In every sport or competition, you need some form of regional tournament to boost that regional scene and allow them to push themselves forward, allow them to at least have some sort of success before they can become better and meet themselves on a global scale and measure themselves on a global scale with the other guys out there. Like Region luck is not a bad thing. Like you are supposed to have some sort of regional competition. And some of you guys may say like, yeah, but I think they went overboard. Too many things got region luck. I mean, that's maybe fine, but it really wasn't that bad. There was always more prize money in Korea than there was on the rest of the globe combined. People made it seem that now Cero and Clem could compete for $2 million, but Maru had to play for 10 k No, you can go over all the numbers. Every single year, there was more prize money in Korea than there was in the rest of the world combined. It's like people ignore these facts, but... Those were facts, guys. Because I was part of a lot of those meetings in the early days. And even I brought it up to Blizzard once. Where I was like, isn't this too harsh for the Koreans? And they're like, yeah, but they still have more prize money to compete over than everybody else on the planet. And I was like, really? And then I went over the numbers and was like, okay, I, I guess they're right. So, you know, facts are facts. The numbers added up. Uh -huh. But that was not the original question. The original question was, was it harder when Bjorn won? I don't know. I think it was incredibly hard both years. 2016, 2019, 2021 or 2024. It is incredibly hard to win a tournament like IEM Katowice or BlizzCon or whatever equivalent of BlizzCon we have. Bjorn is going for a 4 Hellion drop and he shoots at the spawning pool. That probably is not the target that he was dreaming of. Now, Helios do damage to a spawning pool, but you're not going to kill a spawning pool anytime soon. Very good defense here by Rainer. Five minutes into Golden Aura. Barely losing anything. 
Had a promising start, of course, on Heartland as well, and that didn't lead to victory. Mm, Medivac is gonna try to unload the Hellions one more time. Links are unfortunately still in the main, so Beyond might be able to get one good shot off. The second one is only going to soften up drones. The third one does not kill anything either. Rainer, by accident, I think, pulled drones from the third. The Observer didn't really show it. But I think that Rainer control clicked there on drones. And the drones of the third base were close enough that they actually got pulled off the mineral line too. So Rainer actually dealing a bit of extra damage to himself there. As now the Cloak Banshee is going to show up. These Banshees are early because it was double CC opening. Where the Hellion drop didn't do a whole lot. The follow up by Beyond is actually kind of okay. Can maybe kill one more drone here. Nope. Does not want to go for it. Does not want to take damage. Queen's out of position in the main though. Tiny opening here. Nice save on that drone by Reyna. But he'll still end up losing one. Make it two. Make it almost three. But great transfuse. <laughs> drone life matters over here on the Reyna's side. Still hangs on to a 16 worker lead. Like that's got to get you somewhat excited. If you are a, a Reyna fan or a Zerg fan. Double Evo and the Baneling Nest is going to be the follow-up for Reyna with obviously a quick lair so he can fire up Baneling speed the moment that the Baneling Nest is done. <laughs> I uh, I don't know anything about Dark joining Basilisk and I would be incredibly surprised if that would randomly happen. I think it is a lot more likely that Dark is going to join either a big Saudi Arabian team that really has a big presence already in other games and uh, wants to win a couple points in the club rewards thing of, of uh, the big tournament that happens in Saudi or he might join a team like Cloud9 or Navi or you know Team Liquid even uh, I don't know any other big esports org that has a lot of strong competitors because the club rewards TODR is a reward system that will run during the esports world cup where esports org can win points if they have players do well in multiple video games so not just one or two but across the entire summer if they earn points they go far then you get club reward points and the prize pool for that is going to be massive it's like 20 million dollars so for a lot of esports orgs whether they care about starcraft or not it makes sense to pick up a starcraft 2 player and potentially pick up a couple of points because then a tiny investment of let's say you know, let's say fifty thousand dollars. It's not tiny, obviously, but investing fifty k to potentially get rewarded by winning five hundred k or a million or two million is obviously absolutely worth it. So, I assume that Dark is joining one of those big orcs, whether it's a Saudi orc or whether it's a big American esports orc. I think that's what's going to happen. But I'm just guessing. I hope that I'm guessing right. I could be wrong. He could retire, and then I look like an idiot. But oh, Bailing and Widow Mine, by the way, guys. That is the Wombo Combo that Zerg dreams are made of. Well done by Rainer. Unlucky for Beyond. Rainer looking really good here in game 2. As we have a 4 Baneling run by attempt as well into the third base. But Beyond is paying attention. Is he also... Oh, nice eBay block as well. I like that. Keeping the SUV safe. <laughs> Team Ruddy Dark. No. That is absolutely not going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This one, this game should, by the way, be on the US Central server. So this is also the server where Reyna should have a better ping than Beyond. Now, that's no guarantee for victory. We see plenty of uh, entire series go the other way where they lose on their favorite server and they win on the server that they are not supposed to be favored on. But nine minutes into game two. This looks really good for Reyna. Now, this queen fight does not look very good for Reyna. As yes, queens are great, but having to battle 16 marines with steam and 1-1 one, one upgrades and combat shield and two medevacs supporting it, that's not really a fight that the queens can take. So say that's the first real thing that went Beyond's way in this game. Do you know it's also looking good in this game? Is it me? I did my hair today. I didn't do my hair yesterday, but I had to record a video with Harstam this morning at 10 a.m. And if I'm gonna be that famous where I'm on the Hearthstone channel, I better look good, right? So, <laughs> so I had to do my hair. Mm. 
Widowmine blows up a lot of links. The second Widowmine shot is also good. So it is a bit of a massacre over here. A lot of the Marines low on HP because they've been stimming non-stop. But the snipes on the Banelings are excellent and sexy. Well done by Bion here. Great defense. Indeed, rank roulette. It was rank roulette. I don't want to say anything else about it because I don't want to spoil it or anything. But I think it was pretty fun. I think we had a good time. But I always have a good time with Harston. Nice guy. Mm -hmm. Random Twitch viewer 000. If you want, mate. I will share you my stats of ad revenue of the month of January after this game. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I will gladly share them with you. But we're not going to do that in the middle of it. <laughs> Did Daffy mess up your hair? I got smoked on the ladder this morning, mate. It was old school. I, uh, I definitely got a bit irritated and annoyed at one point. It's almost like I'm human, guys. If I play five games and I keep on dying to dumbass one base all ins and everything goes wrong, I too can get a little bit annoyed. And I know that I should be better and I should just be like, it's just a video game, be nice and happy, but no. I have a bit of fire in me left, even if I'm an old man. And if you lose five out of six games and the game you win, you play terrible too, yeah, you get a bit annoyed. <laughs> I wish I was better than that, guys, but I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a human. Banelings will finish up and they're gonna turn around and set chase to all of these marines. Widowmine shot is pretty good there though. And Beyond turns around after he makes it through the side blocker and he says, I believe that I can take this fight as he... Oh my goodness, Widowmine's everywhere. And not a big connection on the right side as well. Rainer having a very hard time letting these Banelings connect with the units. The Baneling nerve on full display over here, 12 minutes into Golden Aura. You guys wanted to help Protoss, but what you actually did... It's made the Baneling suck against Terran. Mm. Links and Hydra's battling Marines as that Widowmine has come off cooldown. Gets a good shot off as well. And Bion's playing sick. His, uh, his openings are not even all that great. But his follow-ups are excellent. Rainer has seven Lurkers on the way. But those Lurkers are not quite done yet. So we really need to have some magic with the Baneling here. His overseers are floating all over the place as well. Beyond still has a few marines left over at the third. And at least the lurkers are done. And once the lurkers burrow, it means that Reyna doesn't have to pay attention to this for a split moment. And he can just focus on saving the triangle. And hopefully for him, he will focus on that. Lost five drones. Beyond looks exhausted. <laughs> can imagine. Oh, burrowed bailings. Ah, they are like, I didn't even see it, guys. It's a bit buggy there on the map. Those marines are so close to two burrowed banelings, and they didn't step on it. Oh! Ah. Come on, Rainer, we deserve this, mate. Hydra's pick up a medevac on the right side. And as Bion is gonna steam forward, a lot of low HP marines, but that does not stop Bion. However, the Lurkers should stop him, and now the Hydra's and the Lynx and the Lurkers take a good fight on the right side of the map as well. Bion is going full the Muslim over here, where he's like Alice. Marines are good against Lurkers. Right, babe? Right? Look at me. I'm going to stim forward. And then everything dies. And he's like, I just don't know what to do. Like, well, there are other units in the game that are good against Lurkers. Marines stimming forward on 20 HP is not quite the way. <laughs> Ghost pretty good. Liberator's pretty good. Maybe Beyond just felt that his opening was rough. And because of that, he needed to be very aggressive again. But... Yeah, Rainer is having a field day now because we're looking at 10 plus Lurkers just battling Marines and Widowmines. It's pretty sick. GG mm. gets called. Lurkers, great unit. I hope that Demo will not see that game because if he does, he may lose all of his motivation to ever play StarCraft again. But don't worry, Ben. There are other units in the Terran arsenal that are good. Rainer ties things up. All right, guys, we have a balance winder in the chat. Zerg underpowered. <laughs> the count was made on the 10th of April 2023. So he's a bit of a strong believer. Notice the bias, bias of the balance team. They don't want a suicide, suicidal expensive unit that can one-shot SCVs. Yet they had no problem with one-shotting probes or drones. Theron has mules. There is no excuse. That's right, guys. There is no excuse. You can make widow mines like you can make banelings. There is no excuse. Bane nerf. Fungal nerf. 
even though for 10 years everything is fine. Way to go, balance team. Nice job on breaking the game. I want you guys to know that. Nice job breaking the game, guys. They had a problem with the bailing and they don't have it with the Widow Mine. Do you guys think that the man knows that on the balance team there are also Zerks? Mm -hmm. Protoss is the worst race right now. Protoss is actually pretty good against Zerk, mate. And I still believe, and this is the hot take, that the internet does not like to hear, but I actually believe that Protoss is not that bad against Terran. Protoss does struggle in very late game. Like in five base plus scenarios, Protoss struggles. Before that, I really don't think it's that bad. And I feel like we are starting to see more and more examples and reasons of why it's not that bad. Mm. Hero also looked good against Bunny, but I know that's just a single best of three and people will get mad. They're like, oh, you talk about single best of three. What about all the losses? It's like, all right, let's see Katowice, guys. Obviously, uh, it will be rough for Protoss without a max packs, but we are watching a big tournament right now. So far, the Protoss players have performed very well in it. And let's see how this massive tournament continues. Maybe we can get a Protoss in the semifinals or even the finals. You never see Broodlords anymore. You should have tuned in two days ago, mate. Ragnarok looked amazing with the Broodlords against Bjorn. It was, uh, those games were very different. Like Bjorn was a lot more chill against Ragnarok. Probably assuming that as long as it would go to late game, he'd be fine. But Ragnarok displayed great late game transitions. Great multitasking. And awesome Broodlord play as well. Today Bjorn is a lot more in the face of his Zerg opponent. Where it's not about ghosts. But it's about Marines and Widowmines. Question, Roddy. On the year summary, I saw that they did a stream. Uh, with they, I mean Fear Dragon, I think Cats, Steadfast, Beomov, and Zombie Grub. I saw they did a stream, but I have not been able to watch it yet. But Dawit49 says, on that year summary stream that Zombie Grub did, she said, as a hot take, that Roddy is the best analyst we have. Then she said it was an internal joke. Care to let us in on the joke? Roddy is the best analyst we have. Internal joke. I actually don't know that joke. I thought I was just going to read out a compliment, mate. And I was like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> it might be that she is referring to... So we have an ongoing joke. And this goes back to the days of Jeff. Where there was a time that people did not really like being on the analysis desk. And they didn't really like doing those kind of segments. People just wanted to cast, right? Because casting gave you the glory and the fame. People just wanted to cast. But at one point, we had a BlizzCon where... Uh, Blizzard was in charge and Blizzard just kept on putting Jeff at the desk and at one point he was like why am I like not casting everybody's casting three four series a day I'm doing like one and I'm just on the desk all the time and Mark Alberts a Blizzard employee back then spoke the legendary words you're very good at the desk <laughs> and after that that always became a joke among us casters that whenever somebody just gets put to desk duty all the time we're always like there you're just very good at the desk like we love you at the desk I personally like desk work, but many of the other casters don't. They just like casting. So maybe it's a reference to that, but other than that, I have no idea. I do think I'm a pretty good analyst. I don't know why it would be a joke. <laughs> Kalara said in the chat that you wrote in... Yeah, that is true. I make my notes in the Chrome bar. <laughs> that is true. I do that. I don't need a lot of notes. I just need bullet points for myself. So I keep Liquipedia open and then I just type shit in the Chrome bar. And when other, uh, when other casters saw that, they all started making fun of me. They're like, you're the biggest idiot ever. I just think it's smart. Anyway, final game of the day. Final round. Fight. Four best of threes of Masters Colosseum. Third day of this entire tournament. In the top right side of El Sione. The map that was a topic of a debate earlier on whether or not this is a Terran map. We look at the main base of the Italian Stallion, Basilisk Rainer. Bottom left side, a very aggressive Bion today, representing the Shopify Rebellion, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That exactly. 
Shopify. I'm just gonna call you Shopify, manually fly flow. Is that okay, mate? Can I call you Shopify? <laughs> you don't find this to be a terror map? No. I can see why it's uh, a good map for terror. This is interesting, by the way, guys. Beyond is building a factory out on the map while still being a one base Terran. This is not your standard TVZ opening. I think the main reason why Zerx will tell you that this map is good for Terran is because it has a lot of ramps. Ramps are good for Terran because they can defend on top of a ramp and anything that allows them to go into the late game. Wow, double factory. He goes for the one base cyclone all in, guys. Double factory, one base cyclone all in. The last time I saw somebody do this build against Raynor, it was Kalazur on Ancient Cisteron in the WTL Code S. And Kalazur won with it. No, wait, Kalazur lost because Rainer found it immediately. But I have seen other people win with it. Rainer has some gas income, but it's not a whole lot. So I think Rainer has like one drone on gas at the moment. That obviously means that his gas income is going to be late, but this Overlord is going to sneak into the natural, guys, from the left side. And it will see a Marine. Will the alarm bells go off immediately on Rainer's side? Still just one drone on gas. Okay, he's now increasing the drones on gas. We need circling speed. I wouldn't hate a spine. One base build over here from Bion against a three base Rainer. Queens and Lynx is what Rainer needs. Rainer has a very happy little circling. I think the moment he's going to spot this factory, he should know exactly what is up over here. Bion is like, oh fuck, you scouted? Rainer's like, hell yeah. 12 links on the way. Zergling speed gets fired up. From here on out, guys, Queens and Links is all that Rainer needs. Both players are 0 and 1 in the tournament. Jack Frost with a very big, slow Zergling scout. He is going to get the safety spine as well, and I like it. Yeah, I, I like a spine. I don't think you need more than one because then it hurts your own economy. You mostly want to rely on Queens and Links, but having one, like one anchor spine as part of your defense, I think, is very good. He's at, he's at his grandma's house. He's in Italy at the moment of it. Rainer's already setting up a surround with slow zerglings, guys. But yeah, this is just very uncomfortable for Bion. I'm gonna say something very weird here, but... Is there a world, guys, where maybe Bion should build Hellions now? Instead of more Cyclones? Because you... I wonder if a couple of Hellions can make your life better here. He doesn't want to do it. Clem did win, yes. Clem won 2-0. Rainer will lose the third hatch. As now Brutlings and Lynx are going to try to surround the Cyclones. Lynx speed is about to kick in. I gotta say, it's not the prettiest surround at first. But here are the extra Zerglings. Rainer misclicks. Oh, oh, oh. Now Beyond misclicked as well as he fired at the Debris. So both players having a bit of a misclick there. I obviously still think that this is okay-ish for Rainer. But that wasn't as pretty as it should have been. His surround was ultra out of sync. He missed the second surround. The Queens did not participate in the fight. That's uh, high ping video gaming there. But yeah, it's still two bases against one. It's 29 drones against 22. Careful, Rainer. Don't lose a couple links at a time. Oh, oh, oh. Now the pathing path is messing him up. Rainer is making life a bit harder here than it had to be. It looked ultra promising. And I think Rainer is still fine. But he needs to stop bleeding out links now. This should have been a whole lot better for Reyna than what it currently is. But it's still good. That says a lot. <laughs> Reyna has messed up twice now and he's still ahead, guys. Cyclones are going to get the lock on on a lot of the queens first. Queen dies. Second queen is going to live for now. That safety spine will fall. As Reyna is sending links to get on top of the factory. Pick off reinforcements. Maybe pick off the reactor. I mean, Bjorn is still just building four cyclones. And a big moment here for Reyna. Needs a clean fight. Needs a clean surround. I want to say this looks a whole lot better. A lot of the links have died, but I like it this time around by Reyna, guys. That's the kind of engagement that Reyna was looking for. And beyond his cyclone numbers dwindle like no tomorrow. Fighting near the Zelnaga Watchtower is still going to be very hard. There's very little surface area for these Zerglings to attack the cyclones. I think that Reyna has successfully done it now. I feel like this can't really go wrong anymore. This surround should also be good. Yep, doesn't make the same mistake as he did before. There is a Reaper grenade in the mix. That's cute and all. But Bion will lose these four Cyclones as well. And he basically has to start all over again. He's down to, what is it, three, four Cyclones. 
Vayner might be able to surround one more Cyclone here before... Oh, there's one Ling, guys! That's gonna prevent the Marines and Cyclones from making it to the Zell Naga Watchtower. And I think with that, it is officially game over. If it wasn't game over, yeah, GG gets called. Raynor wins the best of three. Raynor improves to one win and one loss. Gives us a tiny thumbs up. Maybe not super happy with the performance, but hey. A win over Beyond, I think it's something we can always be pretty damn happy with. So Beyond drops to 0 and 2. Raynor improves to a 1 and 1 record. Yeah, that one circling there was very cool. Very sexy, but... I think that previous surround on the high ground near the rocks, I think that's the one that really uh, did it. Should have been fine the first time around, but the engagement just wasn't that pretty. But in the end, he brought it home. 72% of you all believed that Reyna was going to win today, and he did. GG's. And that will do it, guys. For me, today. Four best of threes are done. I, uh, I will go ahead and send you guys over to... Yeah. Do they have something else for us, by the way? A little preview for tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow, it's Maru Cero. First game of the day. Ay ay ay. Max Pax Ragnarok, Bunny Firefly, and Trigger versus Solar. So these are the four series to look forward to tomorrow. Same time, same place. It starts at 12 CET, noon Europe. So 6 a.m. on the East Coast, 3 a.m. on the West Coast. 1 a.m. for my diehards in Honolulu and Maui. <laughs> 